Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today I have a um, kind of special different video. A lot of times I end up making meads. This time I am discussing something about mead making. And that is, um, what is a traditional mead supposed to taste like? Like what are you expecting when trying a mead? And so I think the big, the big thing that we run into as mead makers and often um, brewers in general is that you can try a lot of commercial meads and get used to what those things taste like. Um, and then like when you try to translate it to your own mead making, it becomes kind of hard sometimes. Um, now there's a flip side to this. Maybe you've made a mead before, but then like you've never actually tried a commercial mead. So like today's that we're really gonna talk about uh, what are you supposed to taste? What are some expectational things to get from making a mead? And uh, I needed some help with this. So I went to my Facebook group. I have a Facebook page, which is Manmade Meadery on Facebook. And then there's the Facebook group, which is where we talk even more in depth about mead making. It's just easier to post there. So uh, I'll, of course, put links down to that below. It's right here, too. But um, I'm going to be crediting the people that I've referenced. So I asked, before I get to them, uh, let me tell you kind of what I am expecting when I try a mead. Um, because mead is honey based, we really want to have a good um, honey character. So honey character is like the tip of the iceberg because you have so many other things that happen within honey character. For, uh, for example, you of course generally going to have something that has a floral taste because honey comes from flowers and bees and those things. So you have a more floral note um, and tasting thing. And uh, then there's, this can go in a rabbit hole because you have a bunch of different kinds of honeys. If you were to compare even like mesquite blossom honey to like orange blossom honey, those two are so vastly different that you have to just really use them in their own special way. So I don't want to get too deep into that. So honey character is important within that mead. And so I often compare honey, like the character of honey to like a warm taste, like I get more of a um, floral notes, warm taste, uh, not like actual warm, but um, in the world of mouthfeel, a mead should not feel extremely uh, light, I guess is a good word. Um, it, should, it should have some weight to it, it should have some body to it, which is kind of something we're going for. Um, so that's what I'm expecting from at least honey. Now when we start to mix in different, like what, if you use special kinds of water, anything like that, that can also t affect the, um, the taste. But I expect when I try a traditional mead, something that is, uh, has a, um, I, I, don't, I don't think color matters as much because you can still have a good mead that doesn't have a really fantastic color. Um, I've had it before. But I also, in the same regard, don't think the clarity is the end all be all. It is nice if you have a mead that is really clear. If, that is, if it's crystal clear, it just looks good. However, that does not mean that it is always good. So I do not equate things like clarity, um, frankly, and color to the mead taste. Was it nice to look at? Yes. Um, but, so, there, there's also things like your mouth feel, which is when you drink it, does it feel heavy? Does it feel big? Is it a big mead? Is it, um, you know, it's just, it's hard to explain mouth feel in my opinion. Um, you're also looking for things like the acidity, um, because we are using honey, generally you have less acidity, so you're, uh, you're not going to have just that high amount of acidity. The same thing, uh, I'm going back a little bit, with a mouthfeel is like how tannic does the mead feel. Um, tannic tannins are uh, things you get from, um, like if you try wine, it makes your mouth kind of pucker up a little bit. That's something that's very tannic will cause that. Um, we have a lot of tannins in um, like some fruits and some things. Um, you're also looking for like the beginning taste and the end taste. So are they vastly different? Is the mead complex? Uh, a, mead, a good mead should have multiple layers of like complexity. Does it have a um, like a sweet beginning and then like a dry finish? Does it have a dry beginning and a sweet finish? Um, like how, how does it taste throughout? And so I'm always looking for something that's not, in my opinion, I don't like super sweet meads. So I go semi-sweet to dry and um, yeah. But I have found that a lot of commercial meaderies, when they make traditionals, um, often will make them sweeter. And that's because 
the demographic, the people who buy mead often are also um, looking like to buy special kinds of wines, things like that. So anyways, um, now I'm going to get into some other comments. Uh, they've started to talk a little bit about alcohol, like how much alcohol volume, that stuff. We'll get into there. Um, I'm just going to go down the list I see. So uh, Moto Satomoto, <laughs> I first look for clarity, color and clarity, then I'll look for viscosity by swirling in the glass, then aroma and taste. Viscosity is like if you swirl, or swirl it around, um, how much, uh, like you can see a little bit of like bubbling, um, and you can also see a little bit of that clarity when you mix it around. Uh, someone who said, I agree, color and clarity along with aroma and aroma matching when I taste. Um, that's another thing I didn't mention a moment ago is you should be able to smell the mead and get the floral notes, get the, the honey character off of just the nose and not necessarily all through the taste. Um, we taste often through our aromas, through the things that we smell. So it's important that we know how to, um, you know, equate the two, put them together. Lee Taylor, me, I like to see a good range of uh, flavors such as honey, spices, and floral notes along with similar sweet to dry. Um, Aaron Richardson, I like to have a good honey taste, not too forward, not too strong, I want to be smooth, not like drinking rocket fuel. That's also important to me. Um, age will help a mead in general have a more um, smooth taste. If you think of a really good whiskey, if you like whiskeys, generally we find that the better ones that sell for more ha are much smoother. They don't have a lot of burn. So if you are drinking a mead that has a lot of burn, um, it probably is not as good. It's younger, for sure. It's also probably just not as good. Age can even help the worst mead. Uh, Joshua Ecton, um, he is he's the owner of White Bear Meadery, which you should check them out if you're interested. And then um, he says, floral, body, mouthfeel, acidic, clean finish, earthy, sweet, sour, clarity. And um, I, you know, he's got a great opinion. He is a great mead maker. So um, I would say he's, he's definitely right. And the, the uh, one that interests me with, with what he said was earthy. When we think of honey, you of course think of bees, but you can also get the floral taste as alongside with this earthy. Um, I, I almost feel like I don't think dirt, dirty, but whenever I taste something that has a lot of earthy taste to it, it feels more like dirty. I don't know if that makes sense. That's a little bit silly. Uh, Matthew, cars, 8 to 10 ABV, no alcohol taste, not sweet, honey taste, crisp and clear. Uh, sweet, high ABV, Kyle Noble said sweet, high ABV. So this is a difference of opinions. He likes, Kyle likes high ABV stuff. Matthew likes low ABV. Um, nice mouthfeel, good honey character. Uh, taste good. I think that's, that's what I asked within this question. I said, hey, what do you want to... What are descriptors of a good traditional mead without just saying, I want it to taste good? Um, Leah, I think that's how you say it. Uh, varieties of honey, making a traditional wildflower or orange blossom versus clover. Um, okay, bright and zesty. John Moore, bright and zesty with a nice honey backbone has been one of my favorites. Andy, I like the honey flavor to be consistent all the way through. Smooth, not uh, mouthfeel. Thomas Harrington, um, smooth honey aroma. Um, just kind of skimming through his. Yeah, it's a. Uh, he basically says that your honey character um, is the most important part, which is true. Your honey character in a traditional mead is what makes it a traditional mead. Otherwise, you just have a wine, essentially. Um, uh, Shano, I think that's not, that's how you say it. For me, mouthfeel is essential. The twang at the side of the jaw that makes your mouth pucker up a little bit. Interesting, okay. That uh, slightly, slight dry feel and falls with the lingering viscosity of honey. Mm hmm. I can see what he's talking about, yep. Um, Kenneth, uh, he's t talking about how you go through the process of drinking something. Generally, you want to smell it, you get this, the aroma of it, and that helps you get the ultimate taste. Um, so if you smell it first, 
and then let it out, smell it again, you're getting that within your body and then you taste it, you have a greater way of uh, getting all of the notes out of it. One of my friends is a, um, a good, or he's studying to be a wine connoisseur, and, uh, or sommelier, I think is what they're called. And um, he, he told me one time about, you know, when you taste a wine, you're supposed to uh, like drink it, of course, but then you, you let in some oxygen, basically, and it kind of, and you swish it around. It's, it's like a special way he told me one time how to do it, and I can't remember exactly, but uh, it helps you get all the flavor extracting out of that alcohol. Uh, Jorowin, so I said that wrong, I'm sure. I seek sweet drinks with little honey taste and a small burn. So he likes the burn. Some people don't like the burn. This is where it's a difference of opinions. You can not like the burn of it and it'd be fine. Um, it's just, how do you want to make your mead? Jeremy Smith, uh, well-balanced, tannin, sweetness, dryness, rounded mouthfeel, great uh, bouquet on the nose, even better if you have the varietal season. Um, he looks for mid to high ABV. Sean Smith, 14%, flowery aroma, crispy flavor, crisp flavor, and uh, Phil Brewer, strong honey presence with a good mouthfeel. The big theme, if you've seen through all of this so far, has been um, mouthfeel and honey aroma. That's been probably the most important thing. Uh, only a few people mentioned things like clarity and color, which is it still matters, it's just not as important to me Currently, if I was a big meadery, then yes, I think it'd be more important to have those things, but I'm not. Um, the, the big thing too is that we're looking for a balanced flavor. You want the palate, the honey care, the honey, oh, okay, back up. You want the uh, traditional mead taste to be complex. So from beginning to end, it should have, um, it should have basically like a, a rounded flavor that maybe starts sweet and then develops over time. I think one dimensional means, meaning like if you try something and it's just sweet, that's all you taste, then it doesn't taste very good. Um, so you're looking for something that's more dimensional than that, that has the sweet, the sour, the earthy, the um, floral notes, all of the things, beginning to end flavor makes a huge difference. Alongside with that, it is so important that you age your meads because age actually fosters a lot of these flavors that we're, we're talking about. So you might be like, I've made a bunch of meads and um, I don't quite get that. Well, if your meads are really young, you're gonna have some different problems. A young mead, even a young traditional mead that just finished fermenting, is gonna have a yeasty flavor. It's not gonna have a, um, the, like alcohol burn is gonna be more heavy because it hasn't had time to mellow out. Um, you're gonna have just some issues that go away over time. So. I hope this has been kind of a helpful thing. Um, now this is opinions of people on my group, of course, and I gave you my opinion today, but I, I really wanna use, use this time to help you guys hopefully make better mead and know what to expect. I am by no means the mead master. There's no part of me that it's like elitist or says that the only way you can do something, uh, only way you can make mead is X way. In truth, you can make mead however you want. What I wanna encourage you is, you have to make me that you like um, because ultimately your palate is the one that makes the greater judgment. If you're not making stuff you don't like, then you're not really drinking the stuff that you made, which is kind of sad. But then also, um, it's just not, I don't know, it's just not as fun. This is a hobby for a lot of people. This is a lifestyle for a lot of people too and that they're meteries and wineries. So uh, we're all striving to make better quality mead, wine, beer, all that stuff. But hope this has been some good insight into what your mead should taste like, a uh, traditional mead at least. This is not true of all meads. Um, I think a lot of the same characters that they talked about, the characteristics of a, a traditional mead can be pulled over to other meads. However, for just a run of the mill mead like this, those are the things we look for. When you start to add other flavors, that's where things start to change. So um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, go join that group, uh, facebook.com, it's man-made mead makers, and you can be on there, and, and um, I might be, I'm gonna be asking more questions in the future using those people as uh, reference too, so thank you to everyone who gave me their input. I hope that uh, you will go and check that out, as well as the links down below, and of course, just subscribe and hit like on this video if you enjoyed it. But I'll be back with some more content. Um, this has been uh, a kind of fun one to do, and I plan to do a lot more with it. So. 
Have a great day and cheers.